Bell, man. Yeah, fuck Bell, fuck, fuck Rogers. Fuck Bell, Alexander fuck Graham me. Bell. And you know That's who right. I think is my new favorite promoter? Tell me. George fucking ghoulish baby. Yeah, in celebration of Vince McMahon retired, we are talking about the second most successful child of a wrestling yes. promoter ever after Stephanie McMahon. That is George the Greek Thunder Goulas. Dylan. Here's my favorite thing about George Goulas. He has the athleticism of Linda McMahon. He has the charisma of Linda McMahon and the drinking habits of Grizzly Smith. What's very amazing about uh, George Goulas is I thought he was so much younger than he was. So George Goulas uh, is responsible for his father losing his entire business empire. What? <laughs> well, no, he's not because... Yes, he is. Didn't it his father is... be like, hey, wouldn't be sick if my son was the champ? Like, that's on... It's on his dad that he's like, no, George wins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on his... It's on his dad that jo that it happened, but it's so fucking crazy. Like, it's literally like... Jeff Jarrett was like, it was the perfect arrangement. Everything was going super good. Uh, and then he was like, oh, one quick thing. Uh, George is the champ and he's like what's that now and he's like uh, George is the champ and he's like absolutely not like the reason Jerry Jarrett fucked off was George Goulas like he was like absolutely not I do not listen to George Goulas like to the point by the way that it's doc sorry my I thought my computer was plugged in and it's not so I'm trying to do that and make my part about Ooh. George Goulas but here's the other thing is uh, Jeff Jerry Jarrett did the same thing with Jeff it is why um, Bill Dundee and Jerry Jarrett fell out is because over the George Goulas thing, when Jerry Jarrett was like, fuck this, we're going, we're splitting off from him. We're starting our own thing. He looked at Bill and was like, you are my most trusted confidant um, because you are a disgusting, horrible person. And your son's you're a shooting Nazi, but with an accent and your son's shooting interviews are mostly like, so I was dating this girl who was 17. I met her through my dad who was dating her when she was 14. So Bill Dundee, you're a piece of shit. And but of course Jerry Jarrett's like, let me tell you who my the two stars are of my organization, and that is the Pedos. And Bill Dundee, <laughs> Bill Dundee first, was first. You got to be a pedophile. Second thing, I guess, in ring talent. Yeah, I mean, I guess you if, like do you do you know how to get in the ring? No, but I do have a van. You're hired. Um, no. Anyway, uh, he said, if I do this with Jeff, I need you to tell me. And Bill Dundee's like, then I told him, mate, and he never talks to me the same way. I guarantee. Uh, Bill Dundee didn't do it diplomatically or politely. Like, I guarantee yeah. he walked up to him and was like, hey, you know, it was a piece of shit. Your son suck my dick. Like, that's what I bear. I know it was that. But, but still, also, you're Jeff like, Jarrett is Jeff Jarrett's a good wrestler. So it's yeah. kind of like an outlier where it's like George Goulas was bad at wrestling and Jeff Jarrett is good. Like, but not great. Good. The thing with Jeff, with George Goulas, and we're kind of doing this backwards, but it's so interesting, is it's not that he was a bad wrestler. Everyone gets that wrong. It was he was an annoying piece of shit. I mean, people say he was clumsy. People say he was clumsy, but what everyone actually says is, and then he told me, daddy says you have to sell. And he was just shit, but super arrogant. Like the thing with it is like, there's lots of bad wrestlers that were shit. Like Rufus T. Jones was pretty famously pretty bad. Thunderbolt Patterson, like apparently had like one move, like Ric Flair in his book said a lot of bad things. But one of the things he said was people say I can wrestle a broom and I've wrestled Thunderbolt Patterson enough to know that I sometimes would rather I'd wrestle a broom. Like there are active examples from the seventies of supremely bad wrestlers. None of them have no talent and also were like a weird 40 year old daddy's boy. Like George Goulas was not a young man. He wasn't like, I always thought he was like 19. He was like, like he was a, a person who was around as an adult. And then his dad was like, and now George is in charge. It's so fucking crazy. Yeah, he basically started. Uh, he became a wrestler at twenty-five. Yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want to be rude, but essentially, Nick Goulas, Greek restaurant did this. If you've ever been to a Greek <laughs> restaurant, specifically in Montreal, because Montreal most restaurants are owned by Greek people, but then when a Greek family who owns a bunch of restaurants opens a Greek restaurant, the joke was always that's for the stupid son because he even the only thing he can't fuck up is Greek food. Was the yeah, joke? He knows, always. he knows too much about Greek food. I yeah. mean, honestly, I think uh, George Goulas was one of a kind and a true champion. I completely disagree with you, although I do like that Dutch Mantel refers to him as an unathletic milk bottle. <laughs> 
Well, they all fucking hate it. I guess. Why do they? Do you think it's the same thing as stand up, where they just want to talk shit, or is it the same? Or is it's, it like no, 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 took no, no. money okay. out of their pocket and they're like big braining this? But what it is is it's both. So okay. it's like stand up in when stand up actually gets a villain, and everyone goes like, like there was a situation pre COVID that we won't go, we won't explain, but I that you remember that happened in February. Remember that over royalties and how. Yeah quickly everyone organized and was like jacked you know what i'm saying because it's like this is what we want to do anyway which is make little cliques and then fight with each other we now (laughs) have we have a like have justice on our side to do that that's the same thing in the wrestling community which is they were like wait a minute nick gulas put his fucking shithead son as the champion finally something we would complain about that anyway but finally a reason that's legitimate huzzah so we should actually talk more about Nick Goulas then, because uh, Big Fat George. Is, well, so um, Nick, so Nick Goulas is also very easy to explain. So basically, Christine Jarrett and Nick Goulas split the Tennessee territory. They were the two separate promoters. They worked together very, very well. Christine Jarrett slowly moved her son Jerry uh, into the situation. Uh, Jerry Jarrett, like all people who are second generation in the wrestling business, are conniving sociopathic dick faces. Uh, and Jerry Jarrett especially is like a weird, um, like Southern version of that. For example, uh, uh, him and Jeff didn't speak for like 18 years. Part of the reason of course was, uh, Jerry sold a portion of the company they started together and then appeared it at the WWE a bunch of times with different, uh, with a wrestler. And Jerry's like, I'll tell you why Jeff didn't talk to me for all that long. He's selfish. He said to me. You did this to me when I was a kid. You just left me with something I wanted to do. And let me say that. Yeah, I left his wife. I left his mother, but I've been married to someone else for almost 40 years. And it's like, yeah, yeah, Jerry, that's that's not the same thing, actually. It's different, but it's just, yeah. And then Jerry just hated Nick Goulas from the beginning. And Nick Goulas was just a prominent Greek businessman in Tennessee. Uh, he was not really beloved by the wrestlers and kind of a dick because he didn't pay very well. But good God, did he know how to run a territory. Nick Goulas was a wrestler for six years. Love it. He's a class. He's a cl- six years. He was tag champs ever all over the place, and then literally stopped. But what the, what's amazing is there's this weird time in wrestling where that's that the promoter was like kind of a shitty wrestler dick bag. It's just weird is that era is never covered because it was like 50s, 60s, and then all wrestling like modern wrestling fans kind of hit the 70s. And they, like no one's like no one's showing up with a fucking Hackenschmidt T-shirt. You know what I mean? Like we'll go as far as the sheet. Well, people didn't wear those disgusting shirts. People dressed nice back in back then. No, like, no, no, no. They're not I, nice, what, but like. No, I'm saying now though. What I'm saying is now. Like oh, no okay. one's gone as far back to be like I need a George Hackenschmidt tur- shirt. You know what I mean? I mean, we should sell one. Why not? I mean, why don't we sell a Yukon Eric shirt? Also. Oh, fuck! How did Yukon Eric die again? It was brutal. It was sad, yeah, wasn't it? Although, remember when we got that nice email from one of his relatives? Like, thanks so much for talking about my great uncle. And we're like, I mean, I don't think you listened to the episode. We're pretty mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fucking, I think he was fucking a loser. Yeah. Something happened. With, I feel like Daddy says exploded. sell. That's very funny. He actually did. It replaced, uh, race reportedly undersold Nick okay. Lewis's punches so, and chops, prompting. Let's talk about Lewis to yell, jo- Daddy said sell. George's career. So George gets into wrestling, I think, because he wants to. And Nick Goulas just puts him at the top of the card. And bear in mind, this is the mid 70s NWA. Like, this is the this is the NWA we all hear about from Jim Cornette. This is Harley Race. Drinking and driving and speeding. This is Jack Briscoe and the Funk Brothers legitimately trying to fight while doing a fake thing. This is like this is like the most cornet wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Which is like, oh, you'd kill your kid just so you could get some heat. Also, George Goulas, if you want to look at pictures of him, he is not he's not in shape at all. And the best thing about him is that even his chest hair is just only in the middle of his chest. He is—he looks th- like a homeless dog, is what he looks like. He looks like a dying homeless dog. Like it's he does, so sad. I agree with uh, Dutch Mantel. He does look like a milk bottle that someone just like kind of freely threw chest hair in the middle of. He just looks like so. Honestly, honestly, it's not even. It, and this is not even an insult. He just looks like someone's dad who works in it where you're like oh that guy's actually pretty tall and then you see him at do, the beach and you're like look at this guy's fucking arms this is do you know who he specifically looks like do you know sure. it 
in like Jack Astors or Moxies, there's always the manager who's been there too long. <laughs> yeah. That's who he looks like. He's like a thin six year old manager who fucking wants a job in corporate. Oh my God. And he's going to get it. He's got a Honda Civic and he fucking mm. keeps it clean. Uh, I get it. I get that you're leaving in a week, Brittany, but that doesn't mean we have to take all day to clean the tables. Like, seriously, I understand that you're going back to medical school and in medical school, you don't need to wear flair on your suspenders, but here at Moxie's <laughs> you do. There's no flair in Moxie's. Moxie's is a sorry, Jack Astor's. Sorry, sorry. Jack Astor's is uh, that place where it's like, I want to buck your dock. That oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Yeah, exactly. It's cool. I. <laughs> it is pretty cool. I gotta say. I like this is the only episode that we've ever started on topic. And oh, we're gonna veer because what's so crazy about Nick and George Goulas is that Nick Goulas does not see the coup d'état coming. Just so focused on how good it is that his son is the champion. Like, here's what it is: is Nick Goulas is not. I don't think an actual wrestling guy, because actually, rest actual wrestling guys are like scumbag, no. weird criminals. Nick Goulas is just a entrepreneur, small city businessman. Which doesn't ever get talked about, but is one of my favorite types of businessmen, which is he's got a briefcase for sure. He has a lot of understanding about one or two aspects of business and the rest of it he does not consider important and ignores it to his peril, which he doesn't count. <laughs> I mean, here's one thing I really like about um, like at least wrestling promoters back then is that I feel like most of them didn't get into wrestling because like now you get into wrestling because you love it, blah, blah, blah and all that bullshit. But, like, back then it was like, yeah, I tried selling ham tacos. Someone told me that's gross. And then uh, it, and then I saw one big strong guy, and I said, what if this guy wins a fake fight against a lumberjack? If I know anything about people that are um, that have Greek lineage but live in North America, I guarantee how Nick Goulas broke into the wrestling industry is he was driving quite erratically by a gym saw a muscly guy and was like, this fucking guy thinks he's better than me, pulled over the car, got out, walked into the gym, challenged that guy to a fight. The guy's like, I'm a wrestler. Nick looked around. There was a bunch of beefy guys, and he's like, if I hire all these guys, I therefore have beaten them in a fight technically. And then he started a wrestling company. That's how Nick Goulas started it. Yeah, exactly. Or someone told him they do it, and Nick Goulas very flippantly said he could, and then that guy got mad, but then Nick Goulas actually did it. Yes, that's also that's a very good guy thing. I'll just go online and then I'll post some funny stuff and people will like it. No, they yeah. won't. It's not that easy. Oh, Christ, he did it. Yeah, so oh, yeah. It's easy. You're a fucking loser. You're a dork. I remember when I worked for a Greek family at a restaurant. Um, this part of the story I'm about to tell is in my Edinburgh show. I assume the cum monkeys are going to come and heckle me. Do not do that. But uh, I got Dude. sent home. I got sent home for a couple of days along with my manager because he has accused me of stealing a little bottle of balsamic vinegar. And I said, I didn't do that. You cokehead. And then we almost had a fist fight. And the owner of the restaurant sent us home for the rest of the week with pay. And the reason why he sent John, the, the other person home, I almost said their name. Uh, it's yeah. Anyway, he almost sent John? him home. Oh, no, it they're going to find out, find the John. Yeah, they'll find that John. Uh, they uh, they sent him home because he's like, that's crazy thing to accuse someone of. And he sent me home because he was like, you stood your ground. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for you. You're not. Which is funny. What is funny, too, is I tried to say that on stage and not enough people have interacted with Greek restaurant owners to know that that it was exactly how he would operate. No, well, that, obviously, like people in Europe probably don't move around as much in Europe. As they would just being like, we're going on a friggin' boat to Canada. Why? I fucking hate Greece. Yeah, because it's it like keeps almost going fascist in the 40s and 50s, and it's very economically unstable, but it's gorgeous to look at. It turns out if culturally you embrace the idea of trying to never pay tax, your country will have a lot of financial problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jackie Fargo was the first person that um, George Gould has formed a tag team with. Which oh, is yeah. Like this guy's like basically forming a fucking tag team with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then, but then, and then Jackie Fargo no longer wanted to team with them because he's like, oh, yeah, I'm Jackie Fargo and this guy's a booger, uh, <laughs> which will come up in a second. And then who did he tag team with after that? Who did he tag with immediately? Bobby Eaton, and they were called the Jet Set. 
No, 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 no. You're, uh, you're. Um, Am I skipping something? Of course, because he uh, he he teams with gorgeous George Jr. Oh my God, he did. Of He's course, never I not in a tag team. Of course. I mean, they they try and hide him, and even then, people get so pissed. But yes, he he wrestles with Bobby Eaton. But this is the thing about the fact that the man has a six year career. That's the last thing he does. He wrestles with Bobby Eaton for a bit. Bobby Eaton's in a mask. They take the mask off of Bobby Eaton because they're like, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. This guy's got no chin. Here he is. Like like Terry Gordy, Bobby Eaton started super young. And according to Meltzer, by the age nine by age of nineteen, he's already like the best worker in that territory. But also they put him under a mask because they think, oh, he looks too young, but then in, they take the mask off. They're like, oh, he's just like all around ugly. So good. Yeah. Can I say this about Bobby Eaton, which I only found out recently, and this sounds really strange, which is apparently Bobby Eaton like died in the basement of his mother-in-law because he had no money. Cool. And it, this sounds really shitty, but it's like, I assume he just didn't tell anyone that or fucking Jim Cornette would have definitely peeled off a fucking piece for the for literally the guy who gave Jim Cornette everything like it was, if there's no Bobby mm. Eaton there's no Jim Cornette I got news for fucking everybody right now yeah the guy who can't wrestle met the guy who can't talk yeah exactly oh hello I need you come with me okay They're each like the best at that thing but exactly they need the other one much like we talked ever- about last week they fill in each other's blanks do you ever find it strange that they never just did Jim Cornette, Bobby Eaton? As soon as I've said that, I'm like, why did they never do just that? That would have been fucking amazing. I'm sure amazing. they did. I don't I'm know. Sure they they did. never did. Like Because the Midnight Express, they had a couple of matches, Ric Flair, Stan Lane, because Ric Flair trained Stan Lane. Very rarely were they split up. Um, ooh. Um, now, what's I want to say this also about George Goulas is uh, he wore a ring jacket and there are so many photos of the ring jacket and the trunks not matching you are being pushed as a main eventer george get your fucking head in the game what the fuck are you doing there's a lot of things though like if you're like i'm gonna become a wrestler maybe like at least have abs do you know what i mean like at least trying to have abs um i know but it's the 70s no one had abs except for Here's superstar george Billy- Goulis, uh Here's a George Gulu story. No, this is just like a fucking... <laughs> this is 180% just some shitty joke. But no Go one ahead. no one likes George Gulu. Like, I don't know. It, so where would you rank this guy amongst promoters' sons? Is he wor- He's worse than Greg Gagne because Greg Gagne could actually wrestle. Yeah, he's not. Here's the problem is George Gulu's worse wrestler. George Gulu's better guy than most wrestling promoters' sons. Like, George Gulu's was so. just kind, was just kind of a spoiled weirdo. Like, he's just like... He just didn't like what's sort of interesting is it's like he was just raised around them so much that like everyone else is afraid of Harley race because Harley race is going to beat the shit out of them. And he's like, Harley, my daddy says you have to sell for me. And he, like, that's what's interesting about George Goulos is actually more of a regular guy because it's like, Harley, you're making a mistake. I'm supposed to be so you're supposed to sell for me. Do you know this what I mean? Like, the, you're being unprofessional. Like technically speaking, George Goulas was one of the more professional wrestlers in the seventies <laughs> because he was listening to his boss. Like his boss was like, you win and the other guy sells for you. And he's like, great. That sounds like a good plan. And then that wouldn't happen with the other guy and people. He, and he was like, the fuck dad, dad. Well, let's fuck. make the case though, for why it is good that you have your fucking son be the top guy in the territory, which is very clearly People are still worried about screw jobs in the 70s, and your son's never going to leave with the belt. Like, your son's just going to have the belt forever. And it's also such security because the other thing is Jerry Jarrett, who is the son of Christine, Nick Goulas, this isn't the partner he started wrestling territories with. It's the son of his partner. And I guarantee Nick Goulas is like, well, I'm planning on screwing Jerry as soon as I possibly can. So I can only assume Jerry's doing the same thing for me. Nick just picked the wrong strategy for that, which was use George as his avatar. Like it would be like this, Dylan. You have a son. It would be like if the wrestler review was a contentious, highly successful business in the South. And you and your plan was like, I'll just make Felix the third co-host. But you decided to do that 
like three weeks from now. So it would be like, let me say, so what do you think about uh, Kenny Omega in um, in uh, New Japan? Blah, 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 blah. It's just like, I just can't work with this guy. You have to work with him. He's the third mic. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think it would add a lot to the show, John. I mean, I'm not against trying it. I'd be totally honest. You have, we'd really up the cute factor of this program. Oh, yeah. Just talking about how much cum we make with a real baby there. Yeah, exactly. That really adds a lot of danger that not a lot of podcasts have. Exactly. You guys talk about come by yourselves. <laughs> we talk yeah. about come well. We could get charged with a lot of stuff. Exactly. At any moment, he could start being able to understand the English language. That is the <laughs> Russian roulette we are playing. That is we, the real test. Yeah. A t- Joe Rogan, you have been cucked by the rest of the review. We are now the edge. We are. We are the edge. Joe Rogan's just a guy who's asking questions. One of the questions is why was Hitler bad? Yeah. Ex- That's a question. Why can't Hitler be questions. my friend? Why can't I clone Hitler and hang out with him? Yeah. Why can't I eat Hitler's box? Because the Hitler I want yeah. to have has a vagina just as fixed to his thigh. Yeah, yeah. Same thing, just a vagina instead. No, no. He has Same a penis Hitler. as well. So he can fuck oh, okay. himself. And so he can make more Hitlers. He has to be able to make more oh, Hitlers. he's a self-creating Hitler. That's pretty sick. He's a self-creating Hitler, of course. That's probably oh, actually I, sick. Dylan, did I not tell you that we're just now in a Rick and Morty world? <laughs> <laughs> so... I think that this is this is the funny thing about this is why I don't think we've done an episode like this in a while. Where it's like I think the closest is Reno from the Natural Born Thrillers because it's like here's literally the five minutes of George Goulas. The uh, gangly man starts as referee. They're like, I'm gonna put him in the ring. I guarantee every wrestler was like, All right, no, they're not. And then yeah. they put him in the ring, and then he's like, Oh shit. And then I can um, I can do this faster. Hey guys, you know the one guy who insists on being the referee when you play pickup basketball? Well, imagine if he was a wrestler and his dad was in control of the company. Welcome to George Goulas. It sucked and his dad lost his company as a result, which is the cr- like how the how fuck does his do dad you- lose the company? Jerry Jarrett um fucks off. So Nick is basically what happens is Nick is put in these tag teams. And then he's just constantly trying to make George. him George. Nick is constantly trying to push George as a main event star. He puts him in matches with fucking Harley Race, and Harley has to go for an hour with this fucking guy. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. Nick Goulas, also, you know how the, difficult it is? I want to see if he's the oldest Greek son. If he's the oldest one. Pardon me. I, I cut you off thinking out loud. You continue, and then I'll uh, get back. It's to, Yeah, totally fine. So and while that's also happening, Jerry Jarrett and... Nick Goulas control different parts of the territory. They promote different buildings and Jerry Jarrett less and less wanted Nick in his buildings because his buildings were holding the amount of people they needed. So his, he could continue to make an absolute cunt load of money while Nick's attendance is going down. And so eventually Jerry just went, me and Lawler are leaving. He took the guy, the heir apparent past jo- Jackie Fargo. There's a reason why George was tagging with Jackie Fargo is how you got someone over in Tennessee is Jackie Fargo. I assume like stopped saying something objectionable to a woman put on a robe and was like, Hey, I know I smell like rye, but this guy's okay. Yeah. Who wants Classic to- wrestling where like what they tried to do with the rock and Roman Reigns where the rock was like, he's good. Cheer for him now. And everyone was like, no, this isn't the sixties. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I did. There's nothing better in the world than seeing the rocks face when people are booing him in Philadelphia at the Royal rumble. And he's like, what, what's this noise? Like, what the fuck are you doing this for? He just, what the fuck? Fuck you. <laughs> uh, so here's, it's even better guys. We have a, we have something great. All right, so I uh, am married Hard. into a part Greek family. The only thing more powerful than having an oldest son that's Greek is that George Goulas was the only son. Oh the no! Yeah, no, Which no, means no. He expected he has... to walk into every room, and the prettiest woman would be like, "I am here with my husband, but I am more here to serve you." I understand that I can't be your cum toilet, but if I could be your piss toilet, I'd love it. Mm-hmm. And then just opens their mouth and be like, I know cum is not deserving, but piss I will take. Greek dudes are fucked. <laughs> Oldest Greek men are fucked. So this guy, like, you combine the privilege of having that, of like having his mom just wipe his ass probably until legitimately he 
um, was in his mid thirties, mid thirties, for sure. Like legitimate. So, and then you get that, which is the only son too, which is just like, or the only am, kid. Sorry, you. It, I am it's, not. He's a psychopath. I'm not trying to play on stereotypes, but I knew he might be nice. No, no, uh, play on stereotypes, John. So, I I worked for a Greek family in a restaurant. The oh my restaurant... god, John has a rice hat on. No, I do not. Uh, the John, uh, uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Oh no, John's just got tape. Where is he putting it? Oh, oh. no. Oh no. Oh no. Turn the video off. Turn the video. I don't know why I'm doing this. I just want to be edgy. <laughs> oh, it just felt good. Um, and they were twin brothers. They were twin. They were the only kids. They had them mm-hmm. like super late. Twin greek sons Mm -hmm. they were the most weirdly spoiled people i've ever met for example one time one time one of them was at the restaurant and i knew his car was there because it was parked in a handicapped spot directly in front of the restaurant and he got his mom to drive 45 minutes from where she lived to go pick up his girlfriend and then drop her off at the restaurant one of the most wild things i've ever seen i don't know oh yeah like i was uh there was a guy I, who I worked at the as the janitor with who like I was at stationed at that school, but then people would like roll through and there was a Greek dude who came in and he came in half an hour late. Of course. Peak COVID bre- like peak COVID, no mask, even though like you would get fired if you didn't wear a mask. And um then he left an hour early and um it was because he didn't want to make dinner and he wanted to swing by his mom's house because she had a plate for him. And Goddamn right. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, I bought my. He's like, I bought. I own a house. I'm a. I'm like a fucking self sufficient guy. That's all he talked about. And then he was like, I'm gonna go. I've never cooked a meal for myself. My mommy does that anyway. Goodbye. Of course, it's I also think like George Goulas is also <sighs> crazy because it's honestly the other thing about that dude is that dude that I just told you about. If you plucked him out as he is and put him into the 1970s, he would have been a top draw as a heel. That is like the the also the talent to find a Greek guy without any personality is fascinating. Every single that's an Greek amazing guy, point. That's such an amazing. Every point. Every single I didn't Greek guy consider. is custom made. Like MJF just hung out with a Greek guy and wrote down everything he did for a year, and now he has that character. Where Those like, twin, the twin brothers I'm talking about, would be the biggest heels in the NWO. Would of be of course. We would all forget what the NWO is because one of them be like, "Hey, I just want to let you know I'm not wrestling tonight, but we're listening to this song I just fucking found out about." 100%. And then it's, and then it's song two by Blur, and it's like yeah. everyone knows this song, man. And he's like, "You've never I heard it the way I found it." Found- yeah, yeah. No, and then like, what was it? My wife went to school with these guys who would go. Uh, this one guy who would go strift or start a real deal just for no reason in the middle of the hallway, scream it. <laughs> like that's amazing. That's 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 a Vince McMahon ready. Catchphrase. Let that me say actually this right works. Now. Nick Gula should have come out and he'd be like, first of all, this is fake, but if it was real, I'd beat the shit out of Harley Race. Race, what? Yeah. What you let you took the last name after the thing you don't like? Ha ha ha. Anyway, cock measuring contest. Oops, don't need to take it out. Just look at the bulge. Alright, my finishing move is your bitch gets too near my dick, she splooches. Anyway, goodbye. You're missing one aspect. One aspect. And then Paul Heyman saw that was like, "This is the cra- Oh my god! I oh just need my. a bunch of Greek guys in a closed yeah. a- arena. What? The only thing is, then there is some sort of judgment over your business or what you're eating. And I'll tell you why I'm better than you. I don't have any fucking sandwiches with butter in them. Mayonnaise only in my sandwiches. What the fuck's wrong with you? Just like, wait, what? Like, I don't. No, know. he'd be like. He'd try something. He'd he would do Bash and Boogers gimmick where it's like you take the food uh, from the crowd, but he'd be like undercooked. Yeah. Find who made that. Shame them. Yeah. My cousin my cousin makes better French fries with this with his fucking ass. Like just think you're <laughs> yeah. like, what? Biggest heel in the territory for six months, biggest baby face they've ever had for the rest. And anyone who comes into Tennessee would be like, Why is this guy a good guy? They're like, just watch him for six months. Also, no one talks to, no one has yet to explain to me what the fuck a man in his thirties is doing saying daddy and him not being in some sort of sexual scenario. Like if you're above the age of thirty, that's your dad. You're not I da- don't daddy. believe that he said dad. I do. I do believe he said daddy. I think he said the you, you have to why? sell. And then they added daddy. No, because it's more like Dutch Mantel. These are wrestlers. Yes, this right. Is like when we talk yeah, about the I'm steroid talking, trial. No, Continue. shut up, shut up. I'm not talking about any no, any wrestler. You shut up. I will not shut up. Ooh, okay. That's something a Greek guy would say. That's right. I believe in democracy. That's why I'm Greek. You're Roman. You believe in. Your mic uh, looks more like a dick than mine. You're gayer than me. That'd be one of his catchphrases. That certainly was. By the way, that is. Give him the longer mic. I got something to say. Bear in mind. <laughs> also, uh, where'd my... you get that accent? 
I have no idea. Yeah, the, d- my dad, my mother. Uh, anyway, uh, the manager of that restaurant that was owned by the two Greek brothers, mm-hmm. uh, he uh, he would text me for years afterwards and go, "I want you to know, I don't think you're a comedian. I've never seen you do comedy." And I remember saying, that's "You don't great. come to a come to a comedy club." And he goes, "I'm aware of what happens in them." That's good. Which stuff. is see, that's Greek. That's so great. Gre- Nicholas Gre- found the one Greek guy who's not as fun as that. Which is so not. Do you understand? I Dylan's brother-in-law would be in charge of AEW in forty-five minutes. He would be on 100%. television. He'd be in like a, in a deck chair, <laughs> literally just like, uh, yeah. I was talking to this guy backstage, Eddie Kingston. He fucking he challenged me to a shitting contest. I fucking I had three logs. They were the, they were five feet each. That guy doesn't know how to shit. He would nullify Eddie Kingston because my brother-in-law does look like if Eddie Kingston worked out, but also Eddie Kingston would talk about like his heart and soul thing and. and and then he'd be like, oh, sorry, couldn't hear that. You were gargling on my balls, bro. Yeah. And everyone would be like, he wins. Yeah. I can't believe Eddie Kingston has been defeated during this promo. Can that All happen? All I need to do is, honestly, if I wanted to start a wrestling company, I would hang out at a construction site for <laughs> four days. And then I'd just be like, this guy says the most weird shit. And he genuinely believes he could win every single fight. So we're hiring the guy who willfully believes he could beat up the heavyweight champion in the UFC and boxing at the same time with (laughs) with an actual wrestling move. Um, What else I want to say? Oh, yes. All right. Here's another thing. Well, I like that we're just talking about Greek guys now. Well, because Um, here's the thing with this is George's career. is. Can I finish this, please? No. Go ahead. ahead. There's a dude who's like uh, friends with, you know, he's in my circle out here. Not a comedian. uh, Older Greek guy. No, he's my age. Um, So he's 36 years old. Last year, this guy was going to play in the OHL, but then his parents said he couldn't. Mass- massive man. Just decided. He's going to be a lawyer. 35. I'm going to be a lawyer. First thing about the law, you can't, if my guy is guilty, fuck you. <laughs> can you also, I mean? is he actually can I have to- uh, Can I go to the side with the judge here? <laughs> can I have a minute with the judge? Yes, uh, we have a recess. What do you want to say? Do you, like, have a guy? Because mine's not texting back. Um, I need some shots, sh- and I need it now, dog. Someone you and I both know in COVID said okay. the fo- following thing to me. Not a Greek guy, but the... Well, then why didn't you just lie and say it was? They don't fucking know. It was slightly more, But slightly more erratic Italian man. Uh, said to me, I'm going to be a lawyer. Don't need to go to law school because you can just take the test for the bar without going to law school in California. Oh, we can say who this is. Mark not, DeBonis. It's Mark yeah. DeBonis. Comedian, Comedian Mark, Mark DeBonis. DeBonis. Look up his stuff. I think his he won $25,000 in did. the Great Canadian Laugh-Off. And started a janitorial company. That was very bad. Yeah, it was just He didn't our, have me. That's why. It was our friend Garrett just cleaned Comedy Bar. It wasn't as much of and a janitorial. did a terrible job. Of course, it's Garrett. Garrett rules. Garrett's, Garrett's the janitor. best. Garrett runs a comedy club now somehow. God of bless Garrett Jameson. Second comedy club he's ever written. Run. He just runs. <laughs> There's a guy who, this is who George Goulas wishes he was, was just Garrett Jameson, another very talented comedian who just falls ass back. Like, he got like a multinational commercial where he made six figures where he just goes like, huh? <laughs> and uh, like, more than once. He's had more than cool. one of those. This guy's lit. Flex. Swole. That guy rules. He is the best. Yeah, absolutely. He started comedy um, in his mid twenties. He's the successful George Goulas. Yeah, was in a sketch troupe it's... that was very extreme. I watched him drink um, nail polish remover. Oh yeah, no that that uh, sketch troupe was great. They had a they had a great sketch about um oh my god, um another talent comedian Bryn Potty wrote a sketch about the first I mean, draft of um songs in the fifties. So you of know course. how like oh my god I remember this they, sketch. they yeah, scaled yeah, everything yeah. down where it was like there was one big bopper song where it's like you're just thirteen you're beautiful and fine uh Mr Bopper we're gonna have to up that age a bit I'll go as high as fifteen God damn it we've been yeah. through this yeah. which is like another thing is if you look at songs from even the seventies every Van Morrison is fine she's ooh my brown eyed girl who was twelve well, well, well she was twelve <laughs> and that makes me feel good when they are before thirteen. <laughs> One of the greatest sketches ever, counting SNL, counting everything, was when, and I love Bryn Potty. I love Bryn Potty so much. Bryn Potty is one of the best comedians at pointing out exactly what is going on, like with a joke, Subversive. and f- 
and funnily attacking that joke, which was the boom had a wildly popular two characters called like Rick and Chuck that were yes. pr private school kids that rapped about extremely violent, fucked up shit. Yes. And Bryn then made them be in a sketch where he was Elton John, like it was Eminem's appearance. Oh, Stan. Yeah. <laughs> and they would rap violence. And I don't know how he got them to agree with this because it was so mean. Is he would then piece by piece take apart how what they were doing wasn't very funny and was very easy, actually. Jesus and God. then they had to rap again. And it was the most, like, I couldn't, and and everyone just laughed at the surface of it. I was like, this is one of the most amazing, like, layered, like, like the sketch worked so well, so no one detected it. And then on top of it was a kind of a just like, and this, I don't like that we're doing this, but I'm a part of this. And the <laughs> fact that, like, they were, oh, I loved it so much. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Anyway, Everyone I just want to say this. If you're running a wrestling company right now, here's something I wanted to talk about um on a chat but we'll do it right now i think that it's now is a really good time fantasy booking i think has been dead for 22 years um yeah very good point. it obviously peaked during the invasion so we'll say 21 because everyone was like this is the worst way you could have done this i would like to do um this so this will be nick Goulas backslash how would you restart wwe and let's say this uh it, we're recording this a week in advance um, so I'm sure not even like, like almost like two weeks in advance. So I'm sure that by now something insane has happened and they'll make yeah. this conversation null and void. So, but Vince McMahon, as of this recording has quote unquote retired, he didn't show up on TV. They didn't. And someone else pointed this out on another show, but they didn't have like a month of parades cause he's retired. So I feel like he's coming back, but how would you redo WWE now? Like, what would you like? What, um, just what general direction would you say? And not like specific wrestlers, even though I'll probably talk about specific wrestlers, but like what general way would you take WWE? It's very now? simple. And it's also also a solve that I would have given to uh, Nick Goulas, which is don't, don't not listen to your audience and give them, give them a, a bunch of what they want, but also let's start building for the future in terms of having a bunch of different guys and get back to the circus mentality of wrestling. I think wrestling is at its best always when there is a variety of things you want to see. I always like it when the main event picture is always portrayed like it is a big fight atmosphere. It is this fucking guy. Can he beat the shit out of this guy? Only one way to tell. And then you have a variety of different things, whether it's uh, tag teams and their dynamics, just two wrestlers. This is a really good wrestler versus another really good wrestler. Let's see how they're going. You know what I'm saying? All those different things. The WWE needs to get back to being a buffet as opposed to a McDonald's. For the post WCW, WWE became McDonald's. We have a set menu of things. You can come in, McDonald's you're going to get. Bad. Exactly. Something like that. It is very much a Burger King. So um, <laughs> I would like them to return to that buffet style. And also, you just have to go with what the audience is saying and trust them a little bit. Relating that back to George and Nick Goulas. George Goulas was not accepted as a wrestler. If Nick Goulas was smart, he would have turned him into a Jim Cornette-esque manager Literally just, George, go out there and say, my daddy owns this company. You will respect me, Harlow. Like, mm -hmm. literally just say that in your shit-eating weird way. Go and be yelled at by Jim Cornette and then just be like, my dad will have you fired. And Southern fans will go fucking say my daddy told you, my daddy will fire you and they will go fucking nuts. That's how you could have saved Nick Goulas's company. And the WWE needs to do a similar thing, which was also use what you have. Understand what you've got. What like get rid of Brock Lesnar and start building eight new Lesnars. I mean, this is the thing about uh this is the thing about that, though. It's like George Goulas. I mean, this is I'm trying to find a George Goulas promo. I just don't think he had the um, I just don't think he had the promo skills to be a wrestler like to he had none of the things that make up being a good wrestler at all. 
And yet that hasn't stopped so many other wrestlers. That's the even crazier part. Still, because I gotta like I gotta. I'm looking at a promo right now from um, oh, of '84 that he, he came didn't back. fucking yeah. He tried to be a promoter a variety of different times because uh, there were still people that were loyal to him and his dad, like Tojo Yamamoto. Is that? Yes, we started a restaurant. The restaurant with, yes. Greek and Oriental cuisine. Oh, no. Um, that indiv- I like, also think... Uh, that, what, a, way, what a two two tastes that do not complement each other. <laughs> Here's mm. some friggin' chicken balls covered in tzatziki. Actually, that'd be okay. That anyway. sounds pretty all right. Um, let me say this is also <laughs> important about George Goulis. Is George Goulis also... Big problem was he pissed off a bunch of guys who went on to start podcasts. So George Goulas' territory at the time was Jim Cornette, Dutch Mantel. Everyone's interested. He pissed in off all raised. the talkers. Yeah, he pissed off all the fucking Gertie gossips. It's like it's a real mistake yeah. to piss off um, uh, me or Dylan because we are gossipy Gerties. Unfortunately, only with each other, so it doesn't go far. Mm, but this Ooh. is the other. Well, it's like, but back then, exactly. Like if you you piss someone off and then they're in the next town immediately, so. It's like, you know, and this sounds obvious, but communication wasn't the easiest back then. So, like, all anyone had heard of George Goulas was he's a fucking piece of shit. When in reality, maybe most of the blame is on his dad just being like, everyone else has a champion that's their son. Now my champion is my son. And the only thing he does, which is insane, within the span of six years, he wins the tag titles 12 times in that territory so one twice a year he's winning the tag titles wow yeah man and like that they talk about his uh, he is tag su- partner. he must be he must have been like a tag team specialist though like he must have been really good at tag teaming wrestling he was he very just, good at tag team. okay good well yeah, then tojo yeah. yamamoto who's like i feel bad because for sure <laughs> there's that he just picked the he just, just picked the wrong side in that dis- disagreement. Told you, yeah, exactly, because he was like, oh, I'll just become, I don't know anyone here. I'm friends, I'm tagging with the promoter's kid. This is a sweet, like, I'll get 20 years out of this. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, wrong. pick the wrong side. Yeah, and it's also yeah, that man, thing of like, crazy. like because also Tojo Yamamoto is, he was part of that fucking, was he not in Session Sand brawl with Onita? He was the other part of that tag team? Like, he is historically a very important figure that should be remembered more than he is, but because history is this weird thing of like that split created the Tennessee that we all know about. So George Goulas, which was the foundation of what Jerry Jarrett created, is never discussed in the same way. Well, this is this is the probably this is the like um, probably a, a hint is that if you're tagging with George Goulas, then you are a very trusted employee of the territory because you get three times he's the champ with Bobby Eaton, three times with Jackie Fargo, Gorgeous George Jr., Ken Lucas, Rocky Brewer, and Tojo Yamamoto. So Wait, whoa, whoa. I'll... He tagged with Rocky Brewer? Yeah. The Rock. Wow. The original Rock. I the original Rock, and honestly, he does not have a Wikipedia either, Rocky Brewer. Wow. That's, not, that's probably not That's good. not... In wrestling, if you're a wrestler that doesn't have a Wikipedia, like... Either you took yours down because you're hiding from your ex-wife, or people were like, "Who? No." <laughs> yeah, and um, this is just one part of Jerry Jarrett's like weird career where he just sucks up. Like he just, and this is the thing where it's like people talk about when Vince killed the territories. It's like they were all trying to kill each other constantly. Yeah, like, no, no, no. This man that- raped Bill- people and helped people get away with murder. You don't need to also add. Where it's like you know when people something when people try and lop on a bunch of shit where it's like R. Kelly's a pedophile and he he's not and he has he, bad he, he grammar didn't even write his songs it's yeah like, well don't even mention that like, yeah who doesn't cares matter about that if the first thing you said is a pedophile you don't need the second thing well it's also this thing of like no one talks about the fact that they'll be like well if Bill Watts had done it we all would have been protected I'm like no you would you're all lucky it wasn't Bill Watts because I got news for you wrestling would have blown up in five years because Bill Watts would not have fired. Pedo Grizzly Smith, who was essentially his vice president. Like you have to understand, like oh yeah, Vince McMahon knew how to cover up a crime. Like it took them fifty years to get him on something, and it was only because he was preparing to sell the company for billions. Yeah, he was grabby, grabby guy, and like, and so another thing that was pointed out by multiple people, but like, I guarantee Vince McMahon doesn't even think what he did was bad at all. No. 100%. There's no way he does. There's no way he thinks 
But um, building the up reason, my question, and also again, you, the reason why he was forced out so quickly is if and when we get the information from that investigation, is more than likely going to point that he took the money, and if he is still involved, which means they lose the company completely. So it can't. The only reason he's not there is because he couldn't fathom the stock price going down because it'd be out of the hands of the McMahon and the street would panic briefly. Well, yes. Well, as of this, once again, as of this recording, he has still like 80% of the controlling power in shares. So it's like whatever Vince McMahon thinks should happen will happen. And Gary, like you said on the original. Story, but again, he doesn't have the he doesn't have that power in the same way. I know that like he still has all those stock. But if the like him as CEO, if that investigation points to that, like he can have all the stock in the world, they will remove him and he has to cooperate because he doesn't want that company to just be lost to him forever. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. But I'm just saying that, like, like you said in the original stream, he's retired, quote unquote, for six months. Yeah. Like, the, there's no way that if he actually retired, like, as of this recording, once again, but like, Stephanie McMahon led one weird chant. And uh, that's that's it so far. But like, the, it'd be like, you know what I mean? They'd like change every the, the name of every arena they perform in would now be the Vince McMahon Center for a full year. Yeah. Again, I I know that everyone. Retire. I I actually do not think he. If this is actually serious and they found something which would cause him to retire, he's not coming back because if he comes back, then they are at risk of having the stockholders remove the family from the company. Like it's. It's bigger than the he made a, an ego error by using company money. By doing that, they can remove him completely. So it's not even if he has all the controlling interest ever, it undoes that if he has used company money. That's the only thing in corporate America you can't do, as proven by the all the other fucked up shit people do. This is what they had to get him out of. It what is it's like that thing of like yeah sorry, go ahead. Let's no say worries. this about um. Just to wrap this up, though, George Goulas, um, it was three years before Jerry Jarrett split and uh, formed the CWA. And he specifically was more and more upset about the draw being affected in Louisville, both according to Jerry Jarrett and Jim Cornette, and did not want George wrestling in Louisville because Louisville obviously was just a fucking moneymaker, apparently. Mm hmm. Because it was on a two, like it was part of their loop. It's that interesting thing of like, it felt very much like stand up of like, well, we can't book that guy because I need to keep that one gig on this loop and he will bomb at that loop. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that very yeah. interesting promoter mentality, which is gone right now, but it needs to come back a couple. Like, I just like, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, all of the things that we used to hate are, are you see the purpose of after a little while where you're like, oh, that's why certain acts will yeah. work in certain places yeah according to just mantel george goulas is the worst worker he ever saw that's crazy it's pretty cool that like these old territory guys can't even agree about like racism but they can agree they hate george goulas yeah they all because george goulas did affected their money and also was snobby yeah, about it just fun to talk shit about a guy yeah i hate him what else did George do? Oh, here's what George <laughs> George ate a sandwich like kind of fast. Oh, I fucking hate him. You know when he, like someone starts yeah. getting bullied, there's a reason, but then eventually that's got lo gets lost, and you're like, of I course. Heard George, I heard George took a dump and sucked his own poops. Oh yeah, I could believe that he would do that. Yeah, that sounds like a real. They call that doing the ghoulie. He also was the NWA World Six Man Tag Champion this 13 is, times, the, and multiple because belt you, holder. You all are aware that Nick Goulas was famous for how, uh, what he kept in his desk? Jizz. Uh, uh, no, that was in the right uh, right hand drawer. In the left hand drawer, he mm -hmm. kept a drawer full of titles. Because one of his favorite uh, promotion tricks was he would declare, like, in, like, three weeks, we're going to have a night of champions. And he'd bring a bunch of wrestlers into his office. And he's like, you're the Texas Brass Knuckles champion. You're the NWA three. Like, <laughs> he just had them in his, in his fucking. That's awesome desk and just like there you go like so it's one of those things where it's like how did george get that belt and it's like how he got everything else is his dad brought him into his office and gave it to him 13 times the nwa world tag six-man tag team champions exactly. which i mean i want to see if there's actually a lineage before this no yes there was oh no all right so there was because roy mcclarity pat o'connor and yukon eric won the original oh my titles. god okay and then 19 years later it was revived for, as you said, Greek Championship Wrestling in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was revived for Brawl Championship Wrestling. Yeah, and then it took three years on, and then um, 
Yeah, and then they uh, then they revived them for the NWA for a couple of years. Back when the NWA, which is something that AEW had, every single match had a title. Six-man tag team titles, tag team titles, USA tag team titles, television title, US title. We're doing, uh, we're having New Japan come over. Now their titles are in here, just like so much fucking shit. I mean, what's so crazy about AEW is it went from like, we got three championships. What's that? We got nine. What? Why? I don't know. Tony bought Ring of Honor and we're just doing that now. Uh, shut up. Yeah. Fuck you. The toughest guy with a toe ring title. He's got a belt, not just a toe ring. All right, John, let's wrap it up. Before we do, here's what I think WWE should do. I think they should get new people in the main event. And I don't mean people they already are in the company. I'm talking about like sign guys who for some reason or another have just never been in your company. I think the number one guy they could sign is like Nick Aldis. I don't understand why he's never been in WWF. Like, a very good question. Yeah, Promos, and the, the end- big, wrestle. Okay, who needs it? I mean, Everyone's I, good at wrestling now. You I'm need gonna guys say- who can do promos. Nick Aldis is a great shout. I would also think that there is a very slim, but they could use the fuck out of not Zack Ryder. But if they brought fucking Matt Cardona back in as he has become on the indies, yum, yum, yum. Here is what I say the WWE does. Speaking of nepotism is Cody Rhodes quest for the belt. Oh, yes, it's going to. That's definitely Uh, happening. I want no on screen screen authority figures. I just want a cavalcade of wrestlers who are here to stop him. Oh, that's good, yeah. And then also, just like, I want a fucking authority figure. This will get me hard. It was just an old man. I want Jack Tunney back. I want another oh, Jack Tunney. yes, as do you I. Who would be a dope authority figure, actually? Go ahead. tweets himself, Gerald Briscoe. Just Gerald Briscoe oh at God. a desk being like, um, Cody oh. Rhodes' actions have resulted in a suspension. Cody Rhodes will be like, am I going to stop watching this? This is putting me to sleep. No, I'm not. This man exudes authority john what's the best thing about george goulas at restaurant he opened with uh, tojo yamamoto worst yeah, thing about it was uh how bullied he was by all the other wrestlers for being bad at something i think the best thing about george goulas is that he um got jerry jarrett and jerry lawler out of the cities that um the goulas That's family true. ran in saving the trauma of so many people that's a very good point dylan yes and the worst thing wrestling uh because he didn't have a wrestling move he looked he was the he was the exact opposite of roman reigns <laughs> he's just all the things you wouldn't want in a professional yeah wrestling. that's a very good point it's so Except for height, actually he's yeah tall. but again but here's the thing the height in this situation was against him he looks like just gilbert sh- he like greek yeah, gilbert he, yeah as dutch man tells that he looked like a he looked like a uh a, a water bo- a milk bottle with arms yeah whatever the fuck if we talked said. about road dog last week he's like road dog if they were like no where's very small trunks road dog yeah he's road dog if road dog got like if road dog was just into coke and then started wrestling as opposed <laughs> to what road dog was was he's like hey i'm uh i'm gonna start doing coke now that i'm in wrestling <laughs> And this is the other thing about the way George Goulas looks it, it, as far as professional wrestling. Um, obviously, if you're outside of wrestling, that doesn't matter at all. But the weird thing is, like, there's a certain just, like, genetic thing. And I don't even mean, like, predilection to having muscle. I just mean, like, the way your face is and, like, body hair. And George Goulas had the dinkiest body hair possible, where it's just one patch in the middle of your chest that's, like, also patchy itself. So you just yeah, kind of yeah, look yeah. like a... You just... You have to get so jacked to not look out of shape. Yeah. Like, if he shaved what... his chest, to look bad. Just the one patch. Like, you can be, like, hairy, and it's like, oh, okay, well, that guy's got a lot of hair. He's, true... He's probably masculine. But it's like, nope, we found the only Greek guy who's not hairy. Can I also say this about uh, being hairy in the chest? If anything in the last five years has suddenly, weirdly, quietly come into vogue, that's the fact of, like, arm and Maybe shoulder hair. 70s. Let's do it. People are back into mm. wanting hair suit and as a man who looks like he is covered in a ghost's pubes mm. i'm happy to hear it <laughs> next week we're gonna next week we're doing something because i'll be on vacation next be week in edinburgh you might be listening to a chat between me and john robertson that was no. held as soon as we were done talking Vince McMahon retired, so it has nothing to That's do with Vince McMahon retiring. That's we good, literally, though. 
ended, Vince McMahon retired. So it's a fun classic wrestling chat with just a uh, a fellow cum monkey who decided to give us some time while Dylan was in uh, is in vacation land. Dylan, where are you going for vacation and why is it uh, the Donbass in the Ukraine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Sri Lanka. Yeah, and that's right. I'm trying Dylan. to start my own government, John. So as of this recording, uh, we will have the cum welcome monkeys. to the regime review. <laughs> yeah, things going well. Best Here's of the best thing Dylan about is Roman successful Reigns, leader. I think is if that if you disagree, I will brutally take all your food. I will take all of your land. Here's what's nice: if Dylan became a dictator, is he would be very harsh, but very rarely. It's only when you annoyed him while he was looking at his phone while stressed. Mm-hmm. Which would be yeah. all the time if I was a dictator. No, I feel like you'd actually be very relaxed if you just knew you were in charge. You're like me. As long as you I'd know, be dealing with coups. No, I think you would. You would fucking. You do a quick purge right at the top. You'd oh, have five yeah. years. Quick purge. Quick purge. All I think is, and you guys can take this to the bank. You kill one child on air. That's it. Everyone's fine with you. Everyone's it's really fine. weird how many times you've brought this point up on the show. I got to tell you, like I it's, talk I about it I, quite a lot, and also I talk about it in my personal life, and also it's the last thing I think about, and the first thing I think about when I wake up. I mean, I. I what I like about working with you is you're a consistent broadcaster. <laughs> I'm a consistent broadcaster. I'm a manly man. All right, I gotta, I gotta go. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, patreoncom backslash wrestler review, and uh, at the John Hastings at Dylan Gott for all our information about shows. Go to John's show in Edinburgh. Go to Cole Cabana and John Hastings. Suck each other off while they watch and wrestling or whatever. We just want to take one uh, last opportunity to thank everyone who prescribes to our Patreon. It really, really helps us not pay. Prescribes. Either way, do whatever the fuck you want. Well, it's a prescription uh, for our Patreon. One yeah, Patreon, prescri- please. Yeah. The do- oh, you need a laugh. Why don't you talk to these two old jackers? <laughs> you need a giggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need these. Uh, have you ever seen two people whose weight fluctuate while they lose their hair slowly? Mm. I've never seen them talk about wrestling before. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you so much, everyone uh, who does uh, give money to the Patreon. It actually does really, really uh, help both Dylan and I. And if you've ever thought about contributing to the Patreon, fucking do it, you cheap fuck. Everyone suck our dick. See you in hell, Dylan. Fuck you. Bye-bye. All right.